Airbnb condos at 36 Zora. 36 Zora Airbnb condos. What is going on? This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor and Mortgage Broker. And today we're going to talk about condos, 36 Zora and Airbnb, how it all works together. Okay, first a quick introduction. This is Yossi Kaplan, my Toronto real estate agent and mortgage broker at Search Realty and Search Mortgage. This is my Twitter, Yossi Kaplan, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, where you will find all the updates, <coughs> the recent videos all posted here, the assignments we have right now for sale. Here's a 333 Richmond, 719, very good price, it's 769 a foot. I want to show you a couple more here. Let's scroll down to the pictures. This is a very important, that's the same one. And 1.2 at Nobu. This 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 ten thousand dollars a month uh, penthouse, a fashion house, it was rented in less than a week. By the way, I was in it. Really, really nice unit. Didn't get the lease. Somebody else did. Uh, fantastic assignment opportunity. Four eighty eight University six forty nine five. Getting the keys a month from now, October seventh, I believe. Um, Four eighty eight University connected to the university line, uh, Saint uh, Patrick Station, which is the Dundas University Station. Phenomenal investment, just under 1,200 foot. Okay, Yossi Kaplan Real Estate. If you're looking to buy, sell, lease, need advice about real estate, or you're a developer or investor or seller, call me. I'll help you with your marketing, with your selling, with your cash flow properties, whatever you need. I'm not just a real estate agent. I'm also a business person, an investor, a mortgage broker, so I understand uh, the business very well and how it works. Today, we're going to talk about a new category of investment, which is the Airbnb condos. Now, if you recall, uh, last year, 2018, I brought you some condos in Niagara, which were Airbnb. Those sold out very quickly. A lot of people called me after. We saw your video. We won't get in. There will be a third and final phase of the Niagara condo project uh, sometime this, this uh, fall. And once we have it, uh, those who will be registered with me will be the first to know, of course, and the first to uh, get a unit there. These are not large projects. These are like a stacked townhome, a three-story kind of, kind of development. So, you know, 50, 60 units per block, no more. Okay. Um, if you want to follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan, all the videos, a lot of information about new developments, about investing, assigning, all that stuff. It's all here. Tons and tons of information. UrbanRealtyToronto.com is my main website, UrbanRealtyToronto.com. Come here for all the information you need. This site's been running on for about 15 years now. Toronto, uh, Toronto Star, the star.ca, showing you, they, they wrote a little article about the, um, the stats that came yesterday. I already did a video. I beat them, actually. If you look at the Toronto real estate market uh, fall 2019, that's based on the same report they're doing this story. Mine's a lot more detailed. Okay, moving to 36 Zora. What is 36 Zora? Where is 36 Zora? And what the hell is going on with Airbnb? So this morning, I was kind of flipping casually around. I don't really participate too much in the social media chatter. I kind of scan it once a day and that's about it. And what I saw is I saw um, a comment on Facebook that says, 36 Zora condos next to Kipling Station in Super is super Airbnb friendly. Super Airbnb friendly. Start making cash flow now. Then all the highlights. Okay, so that's cool. And then, uh, of course, there's a bunch of uh, comments. Usually they're kind of negative, but that's, uh, that's the anger that runs the social media. That's okay. Um, but let's explore what does it mean a super Airbnb friendly condo. Now, just to understand, um, Zora has not, the developer has not released any information. Everything I'm telling you now is basically from what I understand or how I project this to be. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and kind of encapsulate a bit of the ideas of condos, of Airbnb, how it works, cash flows. There's a lot of stuff here, but I'll try to give you a good, uh, good review of, uh, of, I can, of whatever I can. If you have any questions or comments, throw them down below in the comments and I'll respond either with another video or comment back if, if it's possible. Okay, so let's start with location. Where is 36 Zora? Punch it on, uh, on Google Maps and you come to this industrial area next to the Gardner. Yeah, I said it. It's industrial area next to the Gardner. Toronto is expanding. Uh, Etobicoke, the Queensway, is a, is a site of many, many uh, uh, projects coming in. And a lot of people looking at Etobicoke as, a, as, a, as another place to live. Now, it's not that far from the city. You're not even at 427, which is kind of cool. 
This is north of the Gardner. Obviously, Mimico down here, uh, you see where I'm highlighting Mimico, uh, that's another area which is quite sought after, and all the big condos are already arrived here. So there's a whole new community developing. You can see a lot of small houses, okay? And this is the beautiful uh, Humber Bay, the famous white Humber Bridge, Sunnyside Beach. And here you find a lot of large condos uh, coming by the water here. So you can see them here. They start, they start here. Maybe if I move the 3D, it'll be easier to see. There you go, okay? So you can see how the city is sprawling out. It started with this development. It's been ongoing for over 10 years now. You know, um, people thought that was the end of the world, but they, they thought about King West at the end of the world and look at King West now. And that's how it goes, more and more building coming. And eventually, a lot of these developments uh, will take over where it's possible. Where? Near the train tracks, where the train would stop and get loaded. And all these areas here are prime area for development because it's just room here. It's a lot easier to buy an old industrial space than to get a house, you know, a bunch of houses and put a condo in. So zoom back in on the map. It would go. Give me that red pin. It would go 36 zero. So that's that's the location. Okay. So it's Garner, Queensway, Kipling, right at this uh, right at this junction here. You can see there's quite a few other developments here, and of course there's Burrito Boys right there. So what else do you want? <laughs> okay. Uh, IKEA is not too far. The the airport's not too far. You know, it's fine. It's fine to live there. But interesting is, is this fine for Airbnb? You know, is, is it too far? Because uh, who's, the, who's the Airbnb user? Is it someone who needs to be in Etobicoke? Uh, or is it someone who needs to be downtown and looking for a cheaper Airbnb because the downtown Airbnbs are expensive? Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, dig a little deeper, okay? So I'm gonna start with this. Um, let's look at the building. So first of all, the 36 Zora, they haven't released any information yet or floor plans, but for this matter, it doesn't really matter because we're going to analyze it from a different perspective. Um, the render is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous and really, really beautiful. So I really like it. Uh, mind you, a lot of these units will, will have a view south of the of uh, the road of the Garner, right? Because I'm right here. Okay, so, you know, that land must have come at a, at a discount comparing to uh, downtown so you expect the condos to be at a discount also because of the location we don't know the prices yet they haven't released prices or floor plans at this moment if you're watching this video maybe 30 days after after i released it a couple of weeks after i released it probably have the prices already but the, the interest is huge and that little comment they put on facebook that is super airbnb friendly really caught my attention why because um there, there's two you need two, two, two things, there's two conditions for something to be super Airbnb friendly. The first one is that the building has to allow it in the condo, in the condo docks, okay? Uh, every building has condo docks and basically the rules of the building that everyone has to abide by and also it's got the budget and all that and all these things you see of what's called the status certificate or the strata, the stratus as uh, the old people know it or in Vancouver it's called the strata, condos, condo docks. And the other thing is, so the, the building itself has to allow it. Uh, most buildings in town, because all these uh, condo docks are cut and paste, you know, by the lawyer, they usually have six months uh, minimum. And then to change them as a whole, it's a hassle. Uh, Airbnb, of course, offers a minimum of one night. Uh -huh. So it's, it's not a hotel by the hour, but it's one night. So uh, that's, so by, by leasing uh, your condo on Airbnb against the condo rules, that's one problem unless the condo rules allow it. So if they say they're super Airbnb friendly, uh, that means that the condo rules in the, con in the condo docs, in the condo book, uh, should allow short-term leasing, say one night minimum, or even no minimum, you know, rent it for one minute, who cares? Um, the other thing is, uh, the other condition it needs to be is that the city or the community or the region, you know, whoever is controlling that area and can set up the bylaws allows it. So. If the building allows it, that's great, but what happens if the city does not allow it? Let's say the city of Etobicoke says, uh, we only allow 30 days minimum uh, rental. And then they put on Airbnb for one night. Okay, so they, they, they broke the bylaw. So that, that, that's another complication where the developer has to, uh, ideally, if the developer is going to do an Airbnb, they should go to the city and say, hey, would you allow us to do short-term leasing in this building? We'll put it in the condo docks. Will you support this? And at the same time, they probably go to Airbnb and say, hey, we want to do this. 
would you help us? And Airbnb has a lot of money, so they can send lobbyists, lawyers, you know, convincers, pay for ads, all kinds of stuff, just to increase <coughs> Airbnb share because at the end of the day, <coughs> the stock has to come up. Okay, um, so that that's what's happening now. It doesn't really matter, you know, Airbnb, we work all these companies lose money like crazy, Uber. Lyft, you know, they all lose crazy, crazy money. I think five billion uh, a quarter for Uber, and about just under five billion for uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, the other ones, <laughs> uh, the other Uber, you know. So they're losing crazy money, but that's not the point. The point is that it's a new, it's it's a new thing. They find the money, they find the investments to go into the business, and then they own the business. And once they own the business, they can do whatever they want. So a lot of these things happen. You know, when the internet came up and all the content became free. All the content provider had to find other ways to get money out of it. Some of it ads, some of it is just market share, sell to someone else. That's how it goes. Okay, but this this a bit of digression here. So when I when I'm gonna come to the Zora building and they got they got this uh, nifty little video. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can't really see much besides these two models in the studio smiling, which is cool, but. It has nothing to do with the building. If I was an investor, I wouldn't even watch this video. Just a waste of two minutes of my life. Uh, I don't know what's the reason for it. It's. I understand they're gonna try to make it cool, but you know, we already know what Tobico is like. You don't have to show me. Just show me what the building does for me. Okay, that's. Uh, uh, I don't know who came up with this idea, but. Yeah, this. What do we got here? Starting for three hundred, and that's really all the information. So, and here she's yawning. Okay, maybe laughing. <laughs> They're laughing. They're not yawning. Okay, so watch this. 36 zone next to Kipling Station is super Airbnb friendly. Start making cash flow now. Where is Kipling Station? Directions. Kipling Station. Just all the same. Okay, there it is. It's two and a half kilometers away. Two and a half kilometers away. So that's a bit far to walk. If I drive there, well, then I gotta park my car. If I cycle there, it's not bad. Can I Uber? I'm sure I can Uber that. I just don't know how to do this. There's a bus. You can walk to the bus and take the bus. Okay, fine. So you can get there, uh, you know, so the, obviously uh, proximity, you know, Toronto is one of the worst public transport systems in the world. We only have two subway lines, one up, one across. So, <clears throat> so the streetcar goes all the way there, but it's so slow. So we really need to dig uh, underneath, you know, the modern world, we have everything dug, all tunnels, all services will be underneath, ta -ta 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 -ta, everything will fly around. Uh, but for now, that's what it is. And the other thing I want to look at as an investor is to say, okay, they say I'm, I can make cash flow. Okay, so the cash flow is very easy. It's uh, my uh, income less expenses. What my income says, I'll go to, uh, I'll go to um, Airbnb, punch in Etobico with the same postal code for Zora, explore EMB, Airbnb, there's a stays. Okay, and there you go. And it shows me exactly what I can, what I can get here per night. So I can get here anywhere from uh, uh, 57 to 135, give or take, okay? 49% of places in Toronto for your dates and guests are already booked. Okay, so Toronto is half booked. That's very good. And there you go. You can see here, you can zoom around, I think around here. Oh, 184. What do you get for that? You get two bedroom house. There's a whole house. Okay. Can I get like a nice condo here? Let's see. Maybe that's a condo. Uh, private room. No. Modern. Minister Toronto. Okay, so not much, not much. Okay, now the question is, do people need to stay Airbnb in this area? That I don't know. I haven't done the research yet. Probably take a lot more uh, of me to do the research. But what I can tell you is there's definitely a lot of action on Airbnb. Now, I don't know how much, um, how many nights they get. So if I'm an investor, I want to calculate my revenue. So my revenue is the amount of money I get per night, less my expenses, and I time that by the number of nights I, I get per month or per year. So, for example, let's say I get 100 bucks a night on my unit, even like 120. Let's say I get 120 old oak. Uh, let's say I got 120 a night. Uh, Airbnb, I don't know how much they charge me, say 20 bucks. 
and then I got to uh, clean the place. I think that's an extra, so I'm not going to count that. But someone need to manage the place for me, so that's another 20. So now I'm down to 80. 20% uh, maybe goes on taxes. So I got about 60. But I save about half. So 60 bucks at night. That's like my take home after everything. Don't forget Airbnb. You gotta like buy new sheets. You gotta clean. It's a lot of headache. So let's say I make 60 bucks a night uh, profit, more or less, just just for sake of argument, maybe 50, maybe 60, and then let's say I have the unit rented uh, half of the nights of the year, which I think is kind of high, but let's say half of the nights of the year. So about 180 nights times 50. What do I get there? I get uh, 200, 10,000, just under 10,000 dollars. Okay, so that's my income. Is that a lot? That's 10,000 in your pocket. That's not bad, right? That's uh, that's 10,000 profit out of maybe 20,000 uh, uh, total. Now, if I were to rent this condo on the regular market, and I, rent, I get uh, maybe uh, 2,000 for it, 1,800 for it, okay, say 1,800, and um, I also say that the 10,000 is before I pay my mortgage uh, condo fees taxes. Okay, so I can do the same and just get maybe 2000 for the unit and maybe I shave like 100 200 bucks uh, off I don't know what the price is gonna come out but uh, just guessing like let's say I can make a hundred bucks a month or 200 bucks a month so I'm making like one two three thousand dollars a year profit uh, before taxes on a regular rental or I can make uh, 10,000 less my expenses so you know it's it's hard to tell because there's so many moving parts right now so what would help is if the developer, and again, I don't know, I'm not in touch with the developer. I just send them, uh, give me price and uh, plans, and they say we're not ready yet. We'll send it in, in the fall. That, that's all I know. So you know, we're not working for the developer, not making money off them. They don't know I'm making this video. There's absolutely no relation between me and the developer. Um, I didn't even bother to look them up that much. I'm just curious of the concept itself. And the fact that the render looks really nice. I like that. I don't like the render looks great. That's to me, it's just like ridiculous. I'm just gonna close it. All right, so if, if, if you are um, looking at these Utabicos, you know, these are mostly homes and people rent a room, which was kind of the original uh, Airbnb concept, right? You have a spare room rented to someone online, there you go. Make some money and the other person uh, uh, can do it. Um, but you can also get things like this. Uh, that's in Utabico and that's a two bed, two bath for guests. 165 a night. So the question is, the question is, what are your expenses here, and what are the expenses here, and also, what well, what are your expenses to pay Airbnb, to pay the cleaning, to pay the uh, you know, changing your sheets, buying new sheets, running to the apartment back and forth, all these things, uh, and then of course you got to pay your mortgage, your condo fees, and taxes uh, on the condo, and that's assuming the condo is legit. Legit means the, con the condo docs actually allow you to rent it short term, which I think if you do it, you do it this way. That, that's much better to do it, do it overboard, okay? Um, now, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to get into some of the, the comments, the comments that people made here because of some good, valuable comments. And uh, I'm going to have a bit of a discussion about the comments. And if you made a comment or didn't make the comments and you want to comment on the comment, please go ahead. It's all good, okay? And the idea here of going to the comments is not to blame anyone or find any faults, but just to use these ideas as as um, catalysts for discussion. Okay. So, and by the way, they, they have a couple more renders. That looks amazing, by the way. I really like that look. Oh, did both blew me out. Let's try again. 36zora.conos.cf/facebook. Oh, I see. Okay, so a couple, it looks really nice actually. It looks quite nice, I love the architecture. Uh, there's no continuity between the photos that show here and the photo on the site. There's more pictures here than on the site itself. I don't know if that's by default or the marketing kind of fell asleep, but okay. Most relevant, new, all comments. Okay, all comments. Now this is, now you know that I'm not logged into Facebook here. Okay, I'm not logged in, so this is all public information. That's the link right here. You can just pop that link. You don't need to be logged into Facebook, and you can see it. Uh, so this was posted August 30th, okay, 1216 p.m. And Michael Paskevich says, 
kind of despicable things to advertise considering Toronto has a vacancy rate of 1.1%, the second lowest in all of Canada. I wonder who in Vancouver must be the first. People are struggling to afford housing and you are advertising people to make housing into Airbnbs. Okay, Michael. Uh, first of all, Michael has a point here that, you know, we have a shortage of housing. I think that's what he's trying to say because we have a shortage of housing. Of course, price goes up, supply and demand. That's true. Uh, nonetheless, Michael, you know, we do live in a free economy. We do live in a capitalist economy where you, know, you are free, Michael, to run any business you like. And that's, that's a business. So let's say you want to run a business of selling really expensive popsicles. And then somebody will come say, Michael, well, there's a lot of people who cannot afford the expensive popsicles. Why don't you just sell cheap popsicles? Well, that's, that's your choice, okay? That's, it's okay. You can do this. Uh, yes, we have shortage of housing, absolutely. Yes, prices are out of the roof. If you look at my videos, you see I talk about, about prices increasing and the problem with it, all that, and supply and demand, like almost every video. But nonetheless, we are living in a free economy. If we were, if we were forced to do, you know, oh, because uh, the, the, the rate of vacancy is so much, then we have to do certain kind this way and sell it, then we're China. Then we're basically a totalitarian regime or sub some totalitarian whatever that that tells people what to do so we have to choose between you know do we want to live in a, in a free world where things like this will happen you know and, and people can offer a hundred million dollar condo and uh four hundred thousand dollar condo or we say no everyone has to be the same you know like in the old world basically one for all all for one okay michael so that's that's a comment on your comment um i i agree that uh vacancy is low i agree the prices are up but nonetheless I think there's enough land here, there's enough opportunities for everyone to find their niche and to find what fits them. So if this is not for you, find a project, find a business, find an opportunity that works for you and, and go there and it's all good. Gordon Mack Scott, unless of course city council passes the contemplated personal residence only Airbnb requirement, which is fairly likely to happen. Now Gordon has an amazing point here because what he's saying, he's saying that if, uh, if, if the, uh, the municipal government, the city council, representing of the municipal government, our reps at the city hall, in this case of Etobicoke or Toronto, wh whatever municipality you live in, region, township, etc., cetera, uh, they decide, and they can do it, that we no longer agree to Airbnbs. Like the city of Toronto, I think, said uh, uh, no Airbnb for whatever, but they don't enforce it. So what what is the worth of uh, law that you bring forth but you don't enforce did you do it for political reason just to like so people vote for you again you can keep your cushy seat and get paid by the taxpayer or do you have any concern but if you do have a real concern why, did, why don't you enforce it that is the problem Gordon with uh, these bylaws that and the other problem of course with bylaw is you can say that it encroaches it it, it, it it takes away your pro your freedom you know what why if I buy a house or a condo, why can I not do it whatever I want with, within reason? So, of course, the, uh, the, the, the counter argument, you can see I'm not taking sides here. I'm kind of trying to uh, highlight all the arguments and kind of give you a good perspective of what's going on. And, of course, the other thing would say, well, but if I live in a condo and people are using my Airbnb condo, and I think somebody wrote this uh, comment, then uh, what about me? I'm just I just live here, and these people are using my amenities. Da, 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 da. Okay, so if I find this comment, this is this is us here. Looking forward for more info on that one. And John Correll, what savvy homeowners would want to live in a building tutored as an Airbnb haven? Can you imagine how horrible the common areas would look, and how much your maintenance and fee would, fees would cost you? Okay, so John, I think what John means here, he says. Um, you know, if, if, if you're an owner or maybe even a, a tenant uh, of someone in a building that has Airbnb units, then there'll be a lot of people coming in and out. And they're going to use the amenities and maybe they don't care as much as homeowners. By the way, John, I've been in a lot of buildings, tons of buildings. Airbnb guests are pretty cool. There's some renters who are way, way worse. But I have a whole video about Airbnb and some crazy shit. I'm going to tell you about soon. It's like it's going to blow virally, but I'm, I'm holding that. Okay. Um, but John is not wrong, but I think his perspective is limited, John, because what homeowner, John, do you think is so stupid that will buy into a building publicly advertising as an Airbnb? Only an investor, John. Okay. An investor will buy 
no other will because you know the prices are not going to be any cheaper than other building like it's just not going to happen especially if you treat this as an airbnb it means it's cash flow so the developer will say if developer basically think like this they say well if i build this condo and i can sell these units for 900 bucks a foot and it costs me 800 bucks a foot to build then i'm making a hundred dollars a foot times you know as many square foot uh, square feet as i have to sell but if I sell as an Airbnb, maybe I can make you know 20% more, 20 bucks a foot more, and then I can pass on the cost to my buyers, which are all investors, because they expect to get higher rentals than regular rent, and that's why I want to sell them the condo for more money because they're still going to make more income, so everyone's making more money. You know, all these things are not communicated, and that's the problem with with all these like dripping stuff. You know, showing the girls happy at the studio, they're just know 20 year old models clearly they're not going to be buying the condo uh it'll be the family buying for them you know or or they're going to rent um there is a disparity here between the message and what they're trying to do developers really need to hone in on proper and clear communications because the community michael gordon john and steph you know We'll comment, and me too, and and it, it, it's all fair. I mean, I think all these comments here are a good, smart comments. They lack a bit of perspective, because John, do you really think that a savvy homeowner will buy an Airbnb uh, legit condo without thinking of Airbnb in it, without realizing that if you, if you know the condo on your right and left, above and below your Airbnbs, what experience that would give the building? And do you think that a developer would not bring it into consideration? You know, a developer is going to sell a $300 million project. I really hope that they're going to bring into consideration the fact that there is more wear and tear in the building. And that's absolutely something that has to be up, um, uh, acknowledged by the developer. And the developer has to say, yes, there's going to be an Airbnb project. Therefore, we have, um, you know, we design the hallways in a special way to have, I don't know, less marks on them. We design our areas for good flow and fast flow. We have large, fast elevators. We put an extra elevator. We have great security. The security guard can see the door in all the lobby. We have fog for every floor. We have extra security. All these things the developer has to preemptively design and come up and say, you know, this is going to be an Airbnb building, but because it's an Airbnb building, it has different requirements that do not occur in a regular residential building with just owners and, and tenants. A resident, it could be owner or someone who's renting from an owner. Uh, here, you have a tourist. And the other thing, of course, if you do mix, and I agree with John completely here, if you do mix uh, people who live there as owners or even tenants, like regular tenants, 12 months lease, and uh, transient tenants come and go one, two, three nights, that's going to cause a bit of a problem. And uh, in my building, you know, a lot of, in, all over King West, too, a lot of these Airbnbs uh, were shut by the boards. Um, not enough. I think every single Airbnb um, room should be legit. That means it should be legit on the condo docks and legit in the city. Like we should all work together. Um, it's a viable business. It's a good business. But the question: Does it add value, or does it actually re reduces value from the investor? Is very very important. And and I hope to make more videos about that because Airbnb and the whole sharing economy, gig economy, is very important because it's. The moment you introduce a new idea, you also introduce a whole lack of problems. Society has to start thinking differently. You know, you can't be a dinosaur and just say, no, it's already happening. They got the money. They're not going anywhere. Airbnb, Uber, uh, the little scooter, scooter share is coming, you know, lying. But uh, you're going to see uh, Jump, which is the Uber e-bike in Montreal already exists. Like, they're all coming. Canada's kind of the last. Uh, we're sleeping here. Oops, seriously. But... Um, but other countries are not sleeping. You go anywhere in like other countries, there's like tons of like people zooming around on e-bikes and e-scooters and e what not and, and, and living in co-working spaces and co-living. You know, there's a thing called co-live now. All that stuff's coming. It actually exists already, just not in Toronto, but it's coming. Okay, and then Steph, Gururius Kambasis. Is it? That sucks. That's my old hood, and it's not next to Kipling Station, LOL. So, Steph, well, Steph, you need to do your homework, okay? Before you make a comment, um, we have to have a discussion, because there's no information posted here, so making the comments before there's any information um, and say that sucks, you don't, you don't actually know. 
you know, it's very easy on internet. It's, it's called anger porn. I kid you not. It's called anger porn. You guys get angry. I got I got lots of trolls, which is really good for my uh, stats. But nonetheless, you know, you can get really angry and get into the mindset. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. But you, they become sour. What's the point? The point is to see we're here to make money. We're here to have a great life. And we're here to see if this is a viable opportunity. So, <clears throat> dear 36 Zora developer, <clears throat> this is Yossi Kaplan. Toronto Realtor Mortgage Broker, I would love to get more information from you about what do you plan for the Airbnb, how do you answer to these people's questions, because I think, although they might not be the, nice, the nicest, most polite way uh, put in, they're very, very valuable. And I, th I think I'm, I'm actually grateful to Michael, Gordon, John, and Steph uh, for putting these comments because they all have viable, viable things to say and we're all learning from them. Okay, so <clears throat> a couple more comments here. Um, so this week, two days ago, on the 4, the report came and the report was very good. Uh, you can see we have more sales in last August. The prices are up by almost 30,000 since last August. And I, I did it yesterday, but just very quickly, I'll zoom in here and make sure you can see it. Just check here. Okay, good. Okay, so just note that the number of sales is high. The year-over-year -year change is in sales right here and right here. It's very good. Um, the price, the price is uh, stabilized for detached. It basically remains the same, and the price for uh, and and the demand for townhouses is insatiable. Like I told you many times. And condos are also coming up and up and up because, you know, there's so many houses we can build and there's so much land. And it's not like everyone can have a house. No. There's 8 billion people on this planet. If we did 8 billion homes with a garden and everything, you know, there's, there's not going to be any room left. So we got to live vertically. we got to live together. we got to get used to it. Um, this is very interesting times because there's a generation here that is having a big problem transitioning from the white picket fence dream of the 50s, the 40s and the 50s, the post-war dream uh, <clears throat> into, you know, with sitting at home, having your dinner with your wife and 2.1, uh, your nuclear family, 2.1 kids and watching TV to having this world of internet and, and open exchange and everything is legit and there's a big mess with the sharing economy and anyone can start a business, just rent a spare room or offer the services online or whatever it is and that's what we live in. And my job as a real estate agent is to provide you, provide you information and hopefully you like the information I, I give you and you're going to call me to help you transact. Whether you're buying, selling, rental, just need advice, I'll give it to you for free. If you need mortgage, um, I can do that for you as well. We have an amazing team of mortgage brokers. <clears throat> I'm one of them and that's really good. Uh, year over year summary, can you see it? A little bit. I don't know how to move it more, uh, but I can just move it up maybe. Okay, so year over year summary, you'll see that we have a lot more sales this year. Last year was a bit of a slump at the 16 point. Uh, less new listings, so less people want to sell because they're anticipating price to go up. Uh, active listing are less because they're anticipating price to go up, so why would I sell if it's worth more? Uh, the average price is slightly up, but that's good, 3.6%. We want it to be between 3 and 8. 5 is good, in my opinion. And average days on market is 25 versus 27 so they are people are buying faster paying more and there's less stuff on the market I can tell you that the last uh, three four months um, doing the showings there's almost nothing available there's almost nothing available but <clears throat> there will be change soon there's a lot of assignments coming the market that's a whole other video so to summarize 36 Zora <clears throat> first of all um, the developer have given like a lot of uh, information sorry the developer is giving little information and it's inconsistent. So we got this picture here that repeats. Uh, this picture here shows only on Facebook. This is only on Facebook. This is only on Facebook. You go to the website. Uh, this is that 36 zoracondoca slash Facebook. So that's probably their landing page for Facebook. You go to 36 zoracom It's just one page. Uh, you can find some Vimeo. It's like it's all over the place. It's, it's not tight. Okay. <clears throat> This is the non-Facebook landing page, which is the same, just not Facebook landing. Okay, you know, <clears throat> you can register. 
Now, if you want information about this, uh, I'm sure I'll get this information very soon and I'll announce it through the mailing list first. So if you're on the mailing list, great. If you're not, uh, you'll probably hear about it a second. If you want to go to the mailing list, go to urbanrealtytoronto.com, go to contact, go to invest in newsletter, and just fill in your, uh, fill in your, fill your details here. It's my nice pool. Love it. Maybe go later today. And there you go. Okay. Um, Yossi Kaplan here, 36 Zora Airbnb condos. Very interesting topic. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, all the people that commented here. I'll post a link to this video down here. I may have to upload it to Facebook uh, separately because I find that when I upload to YouTube, Facebook does not allow me to do it because it probably wants all the hits itself. But if I post it to Facebook, upload the same video file to Facebook, Facebook goes, oh, that's within my system. It probably show it more. So I may have to split those, but whatever, it's all good. Uh, feel free to comment, like, share, hate, whatever you want. It's all good. That's it.